Many of the diseases that cause suffering and death in the world are linked to genetics, and Huntington's disease is among the cruelest, destroying the brains and bodies of its victims. But Nancy Wexler has stared down the disease that killed her mother, grandfather, and uncles, and could threaten her and her sister. By leading the way to identify disease genes, she's won a victory for all of humanity. Columbia University psychologist Nancy Wexler had an idyllic childhood. She had a biologist mother who taught her to love plants and animals, an older sister she idolized, and a father whose brilliance, compassion, and optimism she worshipped. But lurking in her family was an insidious killer, Huntington's disease. Nancy's mother, Leonor, had watched it ravage her father and brothers, but was tragically misinformed that it struck only men. When Leonore was diagnosed in 1968, Nancy and her sister Alice were told the hard genetic truth. They each had a 50-50 chance of having the disease. They immediately decided not to have children. It was like being confronted at three levels with a triple whammy because our mother was dying, we could die, and our kids were dying because then we weren't gonna have them. But their father, Milton Wexler, was determined to fight for their lives. He founded the Hereditary Disease Foundation to put the best and brightest minds to work on finding a cure. It became their life's work. Nancy did her PhD thesis on the psychology of families at risk for Huntington's. I call it my implosion therapy. You know, when you're, when you're very scared of something, you know, if you just immerse yourself in it, you know, you say, okay, you know, I'll just choose the thing that I'm the most scared of and, and, and get to know it, you know, tame it. When Leonore Wexler died of Huntington's in 1978, scientists with the foundation were developing a new technique for narrowing down the location of certain disease genes using so-called linked markers. A linked marker is a unique segment of DNA that's always passed on with a certain gene, but is easier to find than the gene itself. Others scoffed at the idea, but Wexler embraced it. If the idea worked, but it just took 100 years, then we thought, okay, well, why don't we start? So, Wexler assembled an unusually diverse team of scientists from disciplines as far-ranging as neurology, psychiatry, genetics, and mathematics. She then focused all that expertise on an extraordinary region of Venezuela where nearly 50% of the people had Huntington's. She felt certain that these families held the key to the gene. In 1981, she led a trip to these remote villages, seeing her mother's uncontrolled flailing wherever she looked really just attacks everything that makes you human. It takes away your capacity to move, mood, mentation, everything that defines us. And yet there's like a sliver inside of the person that remains. There's still somebody in there. That's, that's what keeps you going. In the villages, her team implemented a rigorously outlined plan, documenting family trees, noting who developed the disease and gathering DNA samples. By analyzing samples, comparing data, and connecting it all to detailed notes, Wexler's multidisciplinary team zeroed in on a single marker among the millions of possible ones, not in a hundred years, but in only three. I can't even begin to tell you how unlikely that is because, you know, it really is like, if you're, um, you know, if you're someplace like in Mars, and you start, you know, pummeling through out of space, and you're, you know, you're just free fall, free fall, free fall, and you end up in Philadelphia, you know. You know, you're not in the Franklin Institute, but you're in Philadelphia. I mean, that is so massively unlikely. Her team located the Huntington's gene within a decade, and the Hereditary Disease Foundation is now funding research that could lead to a cure for the disease. Even more significant, the success of Wexler's approach to human genetics meant that her strategy for gene discovery could lead to the identification of a gene for any hereditary disease. This scientific tour de force led to the launch of the Human Genome Project. But her own advances brought a new dilemma. Wexler and her sister could now be tested for Huntington's. But would they want that information when there's still no treatment? Wexler again put her personal insights to work, leading the Human Genome Project's working group on the ethical, legal, and social issues of genetic testing. 
As for herself... Some certainties you don't want to have. And so I think the choice between having a certainty that you don't get Huntington's, you have to risk having a certainty that you do. So ambiguity is, is not bad. I sort of use it as a kind of, you know, creative force in my life. The 2007 Benjamin Franklin Medal in Life Science is presented to Nancy Wexler for her vital role in the discovery of the gene responsible for Huntington's disease. By leading combined efforts in human molecular genetics and neurosciences, Dr. Wexler established a model now used to investigate the genetic basis of inherited diseases.